Hi, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we're of RVMobileInternet.com. And uh, Technomadia. And today we're going to be talking about a common issue RVers have when they're on the road, and that's getting a great cellular signal. Common issue? I think it's probably one of the most important, <laughs> most asked about, most critical issues so many people well, other have. than that and Wi-Fi. <laughs> but a lot of people depend on cellular data as their mobile internet source when they're on the road, especially when you're out in places like this. We're at a national forest campground right now. There is no Wi-Fi to use. We have to use cellular or satellite. And cellular signals can be very, very weak, but um, cellular radios and our modern devices are amazing if you just give them something to work with. So sometimes you just gotta push that signal up over the hump and you're going from miserable to connected. So we're gonna give you some tips on how to do that. Um, so here we are at this National Forest on our AT&T phone. We are getting two bars of LTE, which is enough to do most things, but to really be able to do video streaming and webcasting and things like that, we need extra bandwidth. And the one catch a lot of RVers run into is you might have a good signal while out on a picnic table, or out at the picnic table or you're standing on the picnic table with your hand <laughs> up in the air, but your signal inside your RV, particularly if your RV is made of uh, metal like, like. An, a bus or an Airstream or many others, um, you're going to get an awful signal inside without some sort of technology to help bring the signal from the outside and bring it on the in. So let's talk about some of that technology. So a cellular booster is one of the most common ways to get a better cellular signal. And what this does is it starts with an antenna that you put on your roof. And this is oftentimes better than the antenna that is built into your cellular device, like your phone or maybe a MiFi or Jetpack. And the reason that's better, it's a little bit stronger, gives a higher gain, and it's also getting up above the line of the RV. So if you've got trees blocking you or neighboring RVs, this gets you a better line of sight to the cellular tower. And then it has this wire that you'll have to fish somehow inside of your RV, maybe through a fridge vent or as a, some sort of other cabling that you might have through there. And then it's going to connect to an amplifier. Now the amplifier inside, it takes that signal that's coming down from the exterior antenna and then it retransmits it to the inside of your RV into a different antenna. And this antenna, most of them that come with these boosters, can transmit that signal about a few feet away from this antenna. So any device that is within range of this antenna wirelessly picks up a stronger cellular signal than that device was receiving on its own going direct to the tower. But more importantly with these cellular boosters is how it sends back to the tower. So it's not only receiving the cellular signal, it's also being able to take the signal coming from your phone or jetpack and then retransmit it through the amplifier back up to the roof of your RV, back to the tower. And that's why it's very, very common to see increased upload speeds before you see an increase in download speeds. That's because of that it's a higher transmitter and a higher transmit power that's sending your signal from your smaller device back to that tower. So we have just done a speed test here at uh, this winery we're camped at where the AT&T signal is really marginal. It keeps fluctuating between one bar of LTE or two bars of edge. Um, that, that sort of fluctuation actually makes it very hard to use. We just did a speed test here and got 4.25 megabits per second down, which feels like a pretty decent speed, but because it's bouncing up and down, it's actually unusable. And you could really tell how bad it is by the upload speed, which was 0.05 megabits. That's going to feel super frustrating. That means half of what you do online is going to end up getting lost. As you type, things will not respond. Pages might not load fully because the tower can't hear you. So now we're going to go turn on our 4GX booster and here's the inside antenna. We'll see the kind of difference it makes. And we use an example here of the booster is back where Chris is standing and we're running the paddle up to the kitchen area to do the test. So you do have some flexibility with the antenna. So immediately we can see. Jumped up to four bars of LTE and we're gonna start the speed test again. 
And we do always encourage people to pay more attention to the speed test results than to the bars of signal or even the, the decibel readings that you can get if you go into advanced modes on some devices. Because there are actually plenty of cases where a booster might increase the signal but slow your speeds down. So always do a before and after and see is the booster actually helping. And well, we just got the download speed. Download went up to 13.31 megabits per second. And oh my gosh, the uploads are coming in at over 11 megabits per second. So this went from being a frustrating, unreliable signal, uh, certainly something we wouldn't have wanted to stream with, wanted, wouldn't want to surf with, to something that is now super fast, stream in HD, do absolutely anything we want, and the internet is as good as we possibly can have it. So happy day. So there are actually four different types of cellular booster as defined by the FCC. Um, the ones that are most interesting to our viewers are the mobile boosters, uh, like this uh, WeBoost 4GX. So this booster, um, is, as she described, takes the signal in, broadcasts it out, and the FCC limits these to a max of 50 decibels of gain, which is a pretty substantial amount of gain. Um, and these are certified and designed for mobile use. They will adapt as you're driving to the different signal environments. Also suitable for mobile use are these are cradle boosters. So instead of having a separate interior antenna, the interior antenna is built right into the back of this cradle. And then your hotspot or your phone can just actually sit in the cradle and one device only, whatever is in the cradle, is getting the boost. And then you have the outside antenna hooked up here. Um, these are limited to 23 decibels of gain, so a lot less gain, but because the inside device is right on top of the inside antenna, it actually does a pretty good job. Not as nearly as powerful as these other bigger boosters, but really effective for like use in a car or if you need really basic needs. More rarely used is a direct connect booster. Now these boosters here, like this um, Wilson or WeBoost Signal 4G, is designed to actually wire directly to an inside device that has its own antenna port. So this is, instead of having an inside antenna, it actually has a cable that will plug into the inside antenna, in, to the antenna port on the device you're trying to boost. These are used primarily for fixed installations with routers or um, special purposes. These are limited to 15 decibels of gain. They're not super, super useful for mobile use in our testing. And then you've got residential boosters, boosters that are not designed to be used while in motion, like this um, WeBoost RV4G. Um, they're allowed to have stronger gains, but they are very limited in how they're designed. Um, this is actually the WeBoost RV4G is, is sold to RVers, but it is only to be set up while you're in a fixed location. You have to manually aim the antenna, and it is really not a, an all-around everyday solution. So those are the four types. So there's so many booster options out there. Which one is right for you? Really depends upon what your application is going to be. If you're mobile, i.e. you move around more than a couple times a month, then you might want to go with one that is designed for mobile use. So it can both be used while you're in motion and it also has minimal setup at each location. So that would put you down with something like the 4GX and WeBoost also makes a 4GM which is a lower model or something like the Cradle Booster. So we can kick that one out for mobile users. So that brings you down to two different styles and there are other uh, manufacturers like this one's by Solid RF. And there's also a maximum signal. And we have tested all of these head to head against Wilson or WeBoost as they rebranded themselves to. And the WeBoost consistently performs very well. Now between these two, how do you choose which one is right for you? Now, if you only have one device that you're trying to get a boost to, like maybe a cell phone or a jetpack, and maybe you're just only one thing that you're concerned with, you can go with the cradle style. That one's gonna perform pretty well. And if you have multiple devices in your household, such as an iPhone or an Android or any sort, or in a MiFi jetpack, something like this is gonna be better. This can handle multiple devices at once. You will get a diminishing return for each device that you have added to it. And it can also handle multiple carriers at once, which is really important for those of us that travel with multiple carriers, because redundancy is key on the road. So because it's using this interior paddle, 
anything that is within range of this paddle is going to get an increased boost. And the range can be anywhere from a couple inches to a few feet. We recommend the closer the better, which does mean that you want to set up a centralized tech cabinet for everything that's going in there. It's just really, really difficult to get RV wide coverage of that increased signal without going into oscillation, which means that this the signal coming out of this interior starts getting picked up by the antenna on the roof. And you don't want to do that. That's kind of like having a microphone go right in front of the speaker. And you know that screeching sound? Well, that's the same thing that's happening with the wireless signal to cellular when you have these antennas too close to each other. Very important. Now, another consideration is if you are setting up somewhere longer term that you know you're going to have a weak signal, then you can go with something like the RV4G. Now this, like Chris said, is a home style booster. It is stronger, it will give you better signal and better performance, but the downside to it is that at each location, it comes with this panel antenna. This is your exterior antenna. As you noticed, it's a little bit larger than this little omnidirectional. On the mobile booster, these are omnidirectional. You just put it on the roof and it can see signal from 366, 360 degrees around. So you don't have to aim it at every stop. You just turn the booster on, check to see if it's working, turn it off if it's not. With this one, you need to know where the tower is that you're trying to get a better signal from. So you're gonna have to aim it towards the tower and it's got a you know, fairly good degree. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. But it is something that you have to do at every stop. So this is why we don't generally recommend this for those that move locations very often, because it does get to be a hassle. We're lazy. We don't like to do a lot of setup when we get to camp. We just want to turn it on and go. Um, it is will give you a better signal. That is really true. But the other options will give you a very usable signal experience. And we're taking you on top of our RV to show you some alternate antenna options. So you don't have to necessarily use the antenna that came with your booster, and there are stronger options out there. In fact, that very tall one that you see up there, the big black one, that's the new WeBoost 4G OTR, which is designed for truckers, and they do have some use for RVers. But you can see it adds a lot of clearance to our RV. It took us from 11 foot 3 inches to 12 feet, which is pretty substantial. So some it quick is. examples of the different antenna options you have is starting with, as Shri pointed out from the ground, the WeBoost 4G OTR Trucker, this big, tall monstrosity here. Uh, next to it, we've got clamped in the Boat Ant 2 uh, MIMO antenna. So it has actually two antenna cables designed to be wired directly, not to a booster, but to a device that, like a hotspot, that might have two antenna ports. And we have the WeBoost 4G um, magnetic mount, the WeBoost basic magnetic mount that comes with every one of their boosters. Next, we have the Max Amp mag mount antenna here. And you can see the mag mounts are nice because if they get hit something, they all just fall over and the magnet will keep them from causing any damage to your roof. Uh, another WeBoost um, um, stubby antenna. And then we have here a Mobile Mark 4-in-1 uh, antenna. So this actually has a MIMO, two cellular antennas, a GPS antenna, and a Wi-Fi antenna all inside of one thing, one unit. And then we've got uh, the um, WireEng Boat Ant 1, which is a high-gain omnidirectional antenna um, with just a single antenna inside of it. Looks very similar to the Boat Ant 2. So there's a lot of options for antennas. You don't just have to stick with the stock ones that come with your booster. So boosters are great. They can really improve a situation. They can take an unusable signal or a frustrating signal and make it kind of not frustrating or even increase it to a point where you can do video conferencing or video streaming. So they're wonderful, but they're not the right thing for all applications. So if you have no signal, if your carrier is not reporting signal in the area that you're at, a booster is not going to create something out of nothing. It's not that magical. Also, if it's a weak signal, it can do really well with it. But if you're in an area with kind of a moderate signal where it's good but not quite as well as you want it to be, sometimes a booster won't actually help. And that's because of a technology called MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. All LTE devices have two antennas in them. And a booster is basically covering up one antenna and amplifying the other. And that's not always the right solution. 
And what you'll see in that is you'll see your download speeds almost cut in half, but your upload speeds increase if that's the situation. The way around that, however, is to direct wire in antennas directly into antenna ports on devices that support it. A lot of MiFi jetpacks do, routers some do, however, phones and other devices might not. And in those cases, really a booster is your only option to have that wireless retransmission. Um, another common question that we get about boosters is can they help with the Wi-Fi signal? So a lot of people, they want, they go to a campground and maybe there's campground provided Wi-Fi or they're overnighting at a Walmart or near a library where there might be a public Wi-Fi source. Boosters do not help with Wi-Fi signal. They're very, very different. They're different frequencies than cellulars transmitted over. So these boosters are optimized for the frequencies that all of the national the four major carriers, even US cellular, so five major carriers in the US transmit over. And those frequencies are very different than Wi-Fi. So if you're looking to get a better Wi-Fi signal from a Wi-Fi source, you're gonna to need to look at different products, which are like, they're called Wi-Fi extenders or Wi-Fi is WAN products. And those are more like by Wi-Fi Ranger, Pepwave, and um, Cradle Point are some of the more common ones for that. So boosters, these are for cellular only. Thank you.